this. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I did not expect this gun to make me this fucking happy. This thing is fucking fun as shit. <laughs> this is so freaking fun. The Masterpiece Arms Defender. So, what is it? Well, essentially it's a clone of a Mac 10. See, some people know about this gun via video games. However, I know about these guns because of old 90s gangster movies. That's how, you, that's how I recall them. So anytime I see this gun or a Mac-10, that's what I think about, drive-bys. It's probably not the best light to look at a gun in general, but I mean, blame Hollywood. So, what does it look like? Well, if we were an adult in the 90s, it looks iconic. If you weren't an adult in the 90s, it looks like a toy. I was an adult in the 90s. You, so, you were not an adult in the 90s. I mean, I was adultish. You're not adult now. Okay. <laughs> I was old enough to understand how iconic this gun is during the 90s because I had the consciousness to understand what was going on. And you, you are kind of right. I technically wasn't an adult. I, don't even, I think I was barely a teenager, actually. Well, yeah, okay. One win for Peter. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, Before you finish watching this video, a word from our sponsor. Have you ever thought about making a living in the firearms industry? If you enjoy gun repair, ballistics, and learning about firearms, Sonoran Desert Institute's online courses might just be a good fit for you. To find out more, visit sdi.edu or call 480-999-4767 today. All the ammo used in this video was brought to you by Nosler, maker of the most innovative, most accurate, and most effective bullets and ammunition in the industry. I, it is. It's an iconic looking gun for me. It's an iconic looking shape. And honestly, I just think it looks cool. It's one of those guns that effort, effort, effortlessly looks cool as long as you can keep it out of the realm of seriousness. Because if you come into this thinking practically and serious, you're like, this thing's stupid. But if you just relax, just enjoy it for what it is, it's, it's kind of... Freaking, okay. And then there's there's that. There's the safety component about that. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. But like I was saying, it's pretty, pretty freaking cool looking gun. You can't deny that if you have any ounce of coolness. So what are the features? <laughs> Let's start off with this wonky little safety. The safety just spins. It just goes round and round. It's like a, it's like a safety merry-go-round. I hate it. I absolutely hate it because I never really know if it's on safe or not. Like, so when I'm actually shooting the gun, I'm getting ready to shoot and I'm like, oh, is it on? Because even when it's on, it doesn't look like it's on fire. You can't really tell. Because it's like, okay, well, I guess if you think about it, if you see fire, it means it's, it's not on safe. And then when you don't see fire and you see safe, it's on safe. So maybe the person lacking the stu I think that would, would that make me stupid? I mean. Okay. All right. So the safety is a little wonky, though very intuitive when you think about it. You just can't, it's not very intuitive from a tactile standpoint. You can't do, tell by feel, but you can tell by sight. So that means you're constantly kind of, unless you memorize where the tang of the safety is. So if the tang of safety is here, then I know that it's on fire. If it's here, I know it's on safe. And then I'm not gonna lie to you, I get a little nervous because when I put it on fire, I, if I do it that way, I'm getting dangerously close to the trigger in a way that I don't think I really wanna be. So, and then you can spin it that way if you wanna go over the top, but then it's just, yeah. And like I said, you kinda have to suspend disbelief a little bit when you start talking about guns like this. Then you have this, what looks like a suppressor, but it's not. It's a faux suppressor, it's fake doesn't suppress anything. Um, and I think the reason they have it on here is because some people tend to have a tendency to want to hold it out here when they're shooting, which I don't think is very smart to do, but some people do it. But it actually does have a function other than protecting people's hands from burning to hell it, or shooting your hand off or shooting through your hand. But it's heavy. It's actually pretty weighty. And what it does is it create, it allows the gun to be relatively balanced considering how 
unbalanced it is when it's not on there. Now, you also have this top charging, you got this top cocking charger here. I know some of the newer ones are side charging, but this one is top charging. That doesn't really bother me for some reason. Um, I'm right-handed, so whether I charge it here or charge it on top, it feels the same to me. Um, then you have these, these sights. These sights are, <laughs> they're, kind of, they're kind of comical because they're not horrible, but they're like so blatantly utilitarian. Like for the sight, they literally just put white paint on it like on top of the tip of the front post and then like, but not even like precisely. They just kind of like, it's like they took the tip and just dipped it in white out. And it's like, here you go, front sight. <laughs> but it's things like that that kind of add to the character of this particular gun. Um, like I said, suspend a little bit of disbelief. So then you have this ridiculously long magazine that's in the gun that I can never actually get all the rounds in it because it's too hard to do with your actual hands. So you have to get whatever Masterpiece Arms tool loading mechanism tool that they have that I don't have, so therefore I can't do it. And then of course you have this lever here at the bottom, which serves as your way to actually drop the magazine. So as your magazine releases this long lever that almost looks like an outgrowth of the pistol grip. So it almost looks like, like it doesn't even belong there. Like it's, like it's there by accident or something broke. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> so, and of course, which I think is one of the more comical aspects of the gun, is it actually has a, a, a pick rail for your lights or a laser or something. I don't know. I've tried to put lights on it. It don't work. I'm pretty sure somebody's figured out a way to do all that. But for the most part, that's about it. I mean, you do have this back portion here where technically if you really wanted to, you could put a QD swivel on here and then have a single point sling. And then if you wanted to, you could also put a stock if you wanted to or a brace as well on the back of the gun. So how does it shoot? Well, see, you kind of have to ask that question. I can answer that question in like three parts. First, let's start with how does it shoot with this faux suppressor on there? Because they all kind of make a difference. So with the faux suppressor on here, it actually, like I said, balances the gun quite well. So it actually shoots really soft because it's it's essentially one big pistol. It's a big pistol. It's just an oversized pistol. And it actually points pretty naturally, which is kind of weird. Like if you shoot it like a pistol, it points pretty damn naturally. Let's see. <laughs> and it's it's really fun. It's a fun gun to shoot. Like I said, you got you kind of have to suspend your disbelief, but do you really? I mean, if it's if the gun's running, granted it doesn't really like jacketed hollow points from my experience, but more or less it's still it, it shoots <laughs> and it shoots soft and it shoots balanced. Like it's it's a freaking <laughs> you don't, and then let's say it's just a one handed. I don't, I don't know if I can shoot a normal gun, a normal handgun with one hand with the relative ease that I can do with this. It's like, because it is so long here, it just, it creates a natural point of aim for me when I go on the target and it's like, a, like I'm not even really aiming. I mean, I am, but I'm not. And it's <laughs> so with it on, I mean, it's a fun gun to shoot. Is it practical? Honestly, I think the only thing that makes it not very practical is the size. That's what makes it not practical. It's just kind of big for it to be a pistol. But in terms of the mechanics that are involved in shooting a handgun and I come on target, I can do it. Now that I take off the faux suppressor, the dynamics of the gun change quite a bit actually because now all of the weight is distributed on towards the back end of the gun where before it was actually pretty damn balanced. And so now you kind of get a feeling of the gun sitting back here. But mechanically, from the shooting mechanics standpoint, it still points pretty naturally. And I dare say without the weight on it, Pointing intuitively, all right, that's a magazine issue, folks, because these magazines suck. Whatever these mags are, they suck. Ah! 
<laughs> it, I, I think I like it without the faux suppressor, personally. Um, and I think it's because it's my tendency towards liking guns that have a longer grip with a shorter slide. Think the Glock 19X. I've always liked that. So now I don't feel like I have this massive thing sitting on the front end of my gun as balanced as it makes the gun. I still like the fact that I can get on target quicker with it off than with it on because I feel like I'm waiting for the faux suppressor to come on target. Where with this, it's a lot shorter and I can get on target just as <laughs> Oh man, I'm not gonna lie. I did not expect this gun to make me this fucking happy. This thing is fucking fun as shit. <laughs> this is so freaking fun. <laughs> so when I picked this up from Ray Sporting Goods and Hardware, I I I didn't think I was gonna enjoy shooting this gun that much. You know, I mean I wanted it because it's like it's the Mac 10. It's like it's the thing. But boy. This thing is fun to shoot. Whoa, wow, 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 wow. Let's put a suppressor on this bad boy. <laughs> so now we have a suppressor on this bad boy. Let's see what happens. <laughs> All right, so putting a suppressor on it changes things a little bit. Part of it is, it's, it's not gonna give you the same balance that you had with the weighted fake suppressor because this suppressor isn't as heavy. I'm pretty sure you could mimic it if you would have put a heavier suppressor on here. But this is the Osprey, which is relatively light. Therefore, you get some of the, so instead of the gun feeling incredibly back rear end heavy, you start to notice the weight kind of move a little bit further forward again, while still giving you the quick acquisition that you get when you don't have anything on it to the same degree. So it almost is, let's see, let's see how we can get out of here. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh God, it is. All right, no. All right, let's see here, let's come on. <laughs> let's talk about this trigger. So. The trigger on this is, if you go online, you're gonna hear a lot of stuff about trigger slap. Um, and what I think they've done is they got this, this, this rubber sh trigger shoe, whatever they call it, to kind of minimize that trigger slap. And it's still there a little bit, but not enough to make me not enjoy shooting this gun clearly, as you can see. But what you get with the gun is, let's say for instance, uh, I'm not really on target, but whatever. So you get this, it's a single stage, goes off, that's your reset. That's all. That's your reset. I'd say it's about five pounds. It's not a trigger to write home about, but it's not bad enough to get in the, get in the way of the enjoyable shooting experience that I'm clearly having right now. I can do this all day. This is just, I don't know why I have to keep doing that. that Makes no sense. Shooting this gun clearly is a freaking joy. Is it practical? I would argue yes. If you can get it to run reliably with jacketed hollow points, I don't see why not. It, I think it's actually incredibly reliable. I mean, you take this, I mean, they already have PCC caliber carbines that are kind of modeled after this design. So clearly there's some practical applications for it. The difference is it's, cheap it's like 500 dollars um and and the gun doesn't feel cheap it actually feels very rugged and indestructible i think this gun is for people who have that nostalgia it's not nostalgia for the era for guns these stamp steel guns of that era and also i think it's for people who just generally kind of like this look there are people out there who just love the stamp steel look um and then like i said before this gun is very cool looking at least to me it is it's a cool looking gun it's a cool looking shape um and you can't beat the fun so if i were gonna have friends over and we were just gonna shoot just for the fun of shooting we're just gonna plink i think this is an exceptional plinker the only thing that sucks the magazines suck
So it makes loading a pain in the ass. So make sure you have the tool, the loading tool that you need to load this because, and get a lot of mags, you know, because you just, if you can get all of that extra stuff out of the way and just get to the shooting, this gun is exceptionally fun to shoot. Oh, I almost forgot. Another thing about this gun that might be, will be a knock against it is you don't know when you're out of bullets until you hear click because it doesn't lock back. <sighs> the Masterpiece Arms Defender. Chambered in nine millimeter. God, this thing is fun to shoot. Whoo! And then for the record, I, Peter was right. It wasn't an adult in the 90s. You know how frightening it is to think about what happens in the moments before, during, and even days after having to use your gun in self-defense? When you first start carrying a gun for protection, it can be a very scary and nerve-wracking experience, especially if you haven't gotten the education and training you need to feel confident. I've been there myself hoping I never have to go through a self-defense shooting, which is why I'm a member of the USCCA. As a USCCA member, you can eliminate some of the stress of carrying a gun for protection by accessing the amazing wealth of firearm education, training, and current state-specific gun laws of your state or states you may travel to. This can help you be prepared for or hopefully even avoid a self-defense incident. As a bonus, members automatically become insured on the self-defense liability insurance policy purchased by and issued to the USCCA. Click below to learn more. Guns aren't political. That's why I need your help getting this message to spread on YouTube by clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment to let me know what you think of the video, then subscribing to the channel. But most importantly, click that bell symbol. For products featured in this video, click the links in the description.